Hello everyone and welcome to Procurement in the Park. I am Christian Schu and today I want to explore the implications of a truly historic moment. According to the United Nations, India last month overtook China as the world's most populous nation. If the UN numbers are correct, then India now has a staggering 1,426 million people. Take a moment to digest this number. It means that there are as many Indians as there are people in all of the following countries combined. The United States, all 27 nations of the European Union, Japan, Russia, Brazil, Canada, South Africa, and the UK. So why is this a truly historic moment? It's because it is the first time in recorded history that China has not been the world's most populous nation. Of course, such is the slow pace of population change that this moment has been long expected. There are few surprises in the world of demography. But now that India has officially become the world's most populous nation, it is an opportune time to consider what it all means. For India, the potential is simply enormous. At the dawn of the 21st century, everyone assumed that the next 100 years would constitute the China century. Just as the 20th century had been the American century. But now, as the New York Times reported last week, there's speculation that the 21st century could in fact be the Indian century. And this is not just because India now has more people than anywhere else. It's also because India now has more young people than anywhere else. According to the UN, more than 80% of India's population is under the age of 50. And young people are, or rather can be, a vital source of energy, innovation and economic growth. That caveat, can be, is important. While India has a golden opportunity to claim what economists like to call a demographic dividend, there can be no guarantee that all the benefits will come its way. To unlock the potential of India's youthful workforce, the country's political leaders will need to channel massive investment into education, healthcare, infrastructure, manufacturing and job creation. To be able to do that, they will need to forge a new relationship with the world's companies. And this is where chief procurement officers can play a critical role. In my book, Profit from the Source, published by Harvard Business Review Press, I and my co-authors from Boston Consulting Group argue that CEOs should give an elevated role to the CPO. In particular, CPOs should have a central role in shaping the corporate strategy, not simply supporting it. And one way they could do this is by helping the CEO develop a strategic position on India. Business leaders and the investors have long treasured Indians as entrepreneurs and innovators. Indeed, many of today's global companies are led by Indian-born business people, including Alphabet, the owner of Google, Microsoft, IBM, Adobe, Chanel, and until recently, Twitter. Having said this, India as a country is often seen as a difficult place to do business. Yes, it's democratic, but it's also chaotic, bureaucratic, and slow. As a result, business leaders have found reasons not to do business there. But now it is clear that India is just too big to ignore. 
not only as a consumer market, but also as a potential source of labor, manufacturing and technology. Companies will need to collaborate with India's policymakers to find practical solutions to the problems that have prevented them from making the country a central cog in the global supply chains. In this regard, it is striking that Apple, the world's most valuable company and a beacon of best practice for CPOs everywhere, is gradually shifting more work to India and away from China. It was in 2017 that Apple first started assembling the iPhone in India through Vistron and later Foxconn. Then, in January this year, India's trade minister announced that Apple wanted India to account for 25% of the iPhone's production, up from 5 to 7% today. In a step toward turning this into reality, Apple supplier Foxconn last month announced plans to ramp up Indian production of the iPhone by investing $700 million in a 300-acre site in the southwestern state of Karnataka. It is expected that this investment will lead to the creation of 100,000 new jobs over the next 10 years. And where Apple leads, other companies are sure to follow. If you are a CPO and you haven't got India at or near the top of your strategic to-do list, then now is the time to start. Thank you for watching. I'm Christian Shu, and this is Procurement in the park.